What's up YouTube, Josh here. And uh, today I'm gonna make a little video about installing a third function hydraulic on my Kubota L4701. Welcome to the garage. I know it's been a long time since I've put a video up and lots changed. Last video I put up when I rebuilt that John Deere, uh, I was working in a barn. That barn has since gone. Uh, this garage is built. I've got a pole barn here and there's a lot of exciting changes. And uh, hopefully uh, be get a little bit more on a posting schedule as far as videos go so I'm going to be bringing you guys a lot more content hopefully here in the new, near future so thanks for tuning in and uh, let's get this video started let's see what we have in here let's see what we can figure out this is how it comes alright looks to me like a joystick control mm, got some cable cable covering here and then we've got this hoses and the electrical valve itself. It's on a nice, uh, this is pretty heavy actually. It feels pretty good. It's an electronically actuated hydraulic valve, which we're going to mount. So there aren't a ton of components here. Um, I wasn't actually sure what, what, was, what it was going to look like when I opened it. But uh, it's got a nice little bracket. I assume that fits on the front end loader somewhere, but we'll get to that together. And then we've got, looks like an inline fuse. Yep, inline fuse for, I'm assuming the power supply that goes to the uh, valve. And then we've got two bolts, two washers and two split washers, so. All right. First step, we're going to remove these two bolts here and install the, a bracket in behind it uh, that holds up the, the, um, the valve. So we got a 17 millimeter on this Kubota L4701, 17 millimeter. It's a nut and a bolt, so you're going to need to get under there with a, a wrench to hold it. And we're going to remove this real fast. Okay, after you remove these two bolts here, uh, set them aside because you're going to reuse them. Uh, you take this spool valve here, and you want to mount it, like I said, just like that, reusing the bolts from that were holding this bracket on previously. All right, next step is we want to locate the power beyond hose. And on Kubota, normally it's marked with a green tape. If your Kubota's older, this tape has since rotted off, you won't, uh, you won't use that as an indicator. But another thing you can look at is if you come over here to your block, it will be the supply line. You'll notice the supply line because it's hardwired into this control control here for your joystick. And uh, all the other connections, the four connections currently on there are quick connects. So if you just picture it like this, if you were going to disconnect the loader from the tractor and back away from it, you would want to disconnect these, these four uh, disconnects here, but this would stay connected to the tractor because that is the power beyond supply. All right, we're going to disconnect this hose here. It's a little bit tight quarters here, so uh, it helps if you have a smaller, smaller wrench. It's not a big deal. You just have to break the seal. Once you do that, it just spins right off by hand, just like that. So that's off now. And be careful not to get fluid absolutely everywhere. Of course, the line's got fluid in it. And I'm looking, and I think that probably the best way, probably the best way to route this is going to be just pull, pull it up, just like this. And once again, you're going to connect the hose from the power beyond right here, the one that supplies your, your, the joystick block for your loader. It's like all the diverter valves. I can't think of the exact name, but you know what I'm talking about. You're going to put it in the side that's marked T. All right, so wipe off any fluid that may have dripped. All right, in your kit, you get a little length of uh, hose like this. It's 3 8 hydraulic hose. Both ends are the same. There are two female ends. So what you're gonna do now <clears throat> is you're gonna connect one end to the power beyond port on the loader valve, the one you just disconnected and put on the T side. So you're going to put one end on that and the other end on the other side or the P side. Okay, 
on the right side of the uh, this is called a torque tube on your uh, loader here there's a guard and on the back side of here there's two bolts here and there's two bolts there pick this side here it's a 12 millimeter wrench and you're going to remove these two bolts here those uh, bolts that I showed you earlier when I unpackaged the box those are the slightly longer replacement bolts all right there's my helper Josiah Josiah say hi to the camera hi and my buddy Remy here you guys will see him a whole lot more of him and uh, maybe on the next video I'll do a shop tour or something because this is something new here I've not put on the channel yet this is Remy he's uh, almost two he'll be two years old this October he's a full-blooded English Labrador and pretty much the best dog anyone could ask for Remy sit there's a good boy he's very obedient and a great helper around the garage here and around the Kentucky homestead good. we're done with hardware now we're gonna wire up uh, remove this here which is of course the factory little joystick knob um, it's basically just pressed on there it's just rubber that stretches over you just got to get a real firm grip on it and just wiggle it off uh, it takes a little bit of pressure too, but I got it off. And now we're going to wire up this joystick here. And it's got uh, some set screws or jam nuts right there. It's like an Allen head, so I've got an Allen wrench set here. And uh, that's going to be the next step here is getting that. And then we're going to get her wired in and um, wired to the battery. And we'll be done. I mean, this is a very simple process. All right, I'm just about done. All I got to do is hook up to the battery. And this is how I routed my wire. And the wire's coming from here down the solenoid. Wired it, wired it, and then I coiled up all the excess under there. And zip tied it. And I ran that. And it's running down with uh, some other little cable protectors. And I mean very carefully, tighten this back up. You can do this without getting, shortening anything out too badly. All right, folks, this is the finished product here. I've already started the tractor and pressurized the lines. Now I'm just waiting for my wicked grapple from everything attachments to arrive. It's gonna be another I don't know, 9 to 11 weeks till it gets here. I ordered about a week ago. And uh, we're fully installed. We're ready to go. Hello. Hey, buddy. Did you have a good nap? Yep. Say hi, Banks. Hi. <laughs> what did you want to come I see? I had lemonade water. You did? Yep. And it had seats down in the bottom. And it had lemon. So what did uh, what did you want to come in here and see? Are you putting a grabber, a big grabber, on your tractor? I'm going to. I'm getting ready to put a big grabber on my tractor. <gasps> yep, it's gonna come in the mail. Daddy's gonna put it on, and we're gonna rip stuff out of the ground. Does that sound fun? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Well, I hope this video was a help to you, and uh, you learned something, and it 
demystifies the process. It's definitely, as you've seen, super easy. Absolutely easy. Um, it's just you follow the directions and the little tips I've shown you. It's not even really tips. It's just documenting it. Basically, if I can demystify the process for you, give you the confidence to install it yourself, you're going to save a lot of money versus letting a dealer install it, not to mention hauling it to and from. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was a help to you, if you liked it, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below. I'm going to resume uh, videos, uh, uploading videos on this channel. And uh, life's just been crazy the last couple years. We bought another 93-acre farm, and it needs a lot of work, and I'm going to be documenting that. I've um, got a grapple coming, like I mentioned before, in the next, oh, two months or so. So when it comes in, I'm going to be getting a lot of uh, posting videos of working around the farm with it. Uh, got all kind of reviews, all kind of things I've been using, all kind of projects we've been doing around the farm here on the Kentucky Homestead. So hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell down below, and we're going to start trying to regularly upload videos so that you guys can keep up with what we're doing here in the Bluegrass State. And uh, wherever you're at, I appreciate you tuning in. And uh, thank you, and I'll see you soon.